thank you for taking the time to watch this today. We appreciate your commitment to helping your child be successful during their GCSE exams so that they can go on to secure a place in a good college of their choice. At Arc Bolton, we are also extremely committed to ensuring that our students are able to go on to university or a career of their choice so that they can come back and upskill the community, take care of their parents and be good role models to younger siblings. That is precisely why we have such high expectations of our students and have the absolute belief that they can go on to achieve great success. At this point in the year, students should now be revising every single day. They should be doing at least two hours of independent study every day after school. It is important that they begin revising the subject that they find most difficult, not one that they are already doing well in, a trap that most students fall into. Students will be given a personalised revision timetable according to their needs and gaps from the assessment. But for the meantime, we need to make sure that they have already created their own revision timetable and that they are using it. This is an extremely important time in your child's life and the results that they achieve in these examinations will carry them through for the rest of their lives. Even at my age now, if I go for a job interview, the outcome is decided based on my results. So that time is now for you to be investing in your child's future. A revision timetable is really important because it creates what we call time buckets. These time buckets mean that students don't need to worry about organising what they are going to be doing and when. It frees their mind to focus on the content of what they are revising rather than when they will be revising. These time buckets need to be created to allow your child to focus on the subjects that they are most underperforming in. Students have a habit of revising subjects they feel that they are doing well in because it is easier. We need students to focus on what they find hard so that they are remembering the information they do not yet know. I want you now to experience what your child could possibly be experiencing whilst they are revising. You're going to have 10 seconds to memorise these numbers in front of you. Now, write those numbers down. I want you to consider how many did you get right and in the correct order. You can now see how it is difficult for students to remember information even if they have only just learnt it. Most people can only remember around six to seven numbers. There is a clear reason for this. We call this your working memory. You've just found out this information and the brain simply cannot remember it all. The brain removes the information that it thinks it does not need. But the problem is, it doesn't know what is needed and what isn't. We are now going to repeat the same exercise, but this time we are replacing letters for the numbers. You are now going to have 10 seconds to remember these 17 letters. I'm assuming that everybody found that a lot easier. This was easier because your long-term memory has stored these words into your brain already. We use these words every day and in different ways. So why am I telling you this? We need you to help your child to train their brain onto how to store information into their long-term memory. Let me now introduce you to what we call the forgetting curve. 
This graph was created a long time ago and it shows how easy it is for our brains to forget information. This is a problem for students as they cannot retain the information that they have been taught over time. Let's look at it now in more detail. When you first learn something, you retain 100% of the information because the information is fresh into your brain. After a few days, your memory rate drops sharply down to around 40%. By the time students get to six months, around May or June time, or for us, the time of their exams, they will only retain roughly 10% of the information they have learnt. That's alarming. So how can you help your child to beat the forgetting curve and ensure that they remember the information that they need to be successful in their exams? The first thing that is imperative to ensuring that students are successful is number one, making sure your child has a quiet space to work each evening so that the learning environment is secure. Be sure to check in on them whilst they are working to make sure that they are on the right track. Number two, make sure your child is in school and on time every day. Talk to them about focusing lessons and behaving well so that they are able to use their working memory to its full potential. Number three, in order to beat the forgetting curve, students need to get as much information as possible into their long term memory. We're now going to look at how we can do this. There are two main ways that students can move their information from their short term memory into the long term memory. The first one is what we call over learning. Over learning means that students need to keep practicing. They need to look at the same information again and again so that they know it without having to think about it too hard. It's like brushing our teeth. We do it twice a day, every day, and therefore we don't forget how to do it. The second way to beat the forgetting curve is by distributing practice. Not doing lots of one thing at one time. This is where revision timetables come in again. Students need to spread out their learning across a period of time so that they can check to see if they've forgotten anything. This will give them time to test themselves to close any gaps in knowledge that they may have before the exams begin. One way to help your child to beat the forgetting curve and to revise effectively is to help them by creating flashcards. These are the steps that students have been taught to take when making their flashcards. Number one, Students have been taught to pick the subject that they are underperforming in the most. They will then pick a specific topic, as in one lesson that they have learned from a subject, that their card will be about. They are then going to think of key learning questions that they know they will need to know in the exam. They are going to write a question on one side of the card. They will then write their answer on the other side of the card in bullet points. They can use colours and symbols to help. But the most important thing is that they need to test themselves on the content. It's going to be really useful and effective if you or an elder sibling can help test your child's understanding of the topic. We're now going to look at an example of a good and effective flashcard. You will see that the content that your child needs to learn is on one side of the flashcard. On the other side of the flashcard are key questions to test their knowledge. Your job is to help your child by testing them. Ask them the questions on the back so that they can check if they have retained the information that they have learnt. They need to use over learning. This means they need to do it again and again and again 
so that they learn the information. So if, for example, you test your child on three questions and they get the answer correct, you need to then test them again in a few days and then again a few days later. We need to ensure that this information is going into their long term memory. Another way that students have been taught to revise is by using Cornell notes. Students can make their Cornell notes by using the notes in their exercise books and revision guides. In the middle, they need to include the information that they need to learn in the same way as they've done on their flashcards. On the left hand side, underneath the key points column, they need to write down keywords or questions that will act as a trigger to help them remember the content. At the bottom, they can write a summary of the information based on the keywords or questions. So students will make notes in the main body of their page. They will then write keywords or questions to prompt them in a column on the side. Finally, and most importantly, they will summarise this information in just a few lines to show they have internalised and understood this information. Once the students have created their notes, the next step is to cover, write and check. They need to be able to repeat this process again and again until they are able to copy out all of the notes without any mistakes. Then, after a day or two, they need to do the same process again and again to see how much information they have retained in their long term memory. So they will cover the key information but they will leave the key points visible as a prompt to remind them what to write. They will then remove the cover and check if they wrote down the correct information. We know that the most important thing that students need to be do whilst revising is cover, writing and checking. They need to repeat this process again and again until they are able to copy out all of the notes without any mistakes. They will have to do this multiple times to check how much information they have retained and how much has transferred to their long term memory. You will now be able to see some examples of excellent Cornell notes that students have made in the past. It's up to students what kind of information they include in their Cornell notes. They can use diagrams and images too. Thank you for taking the time to engage with this video. Your key takeaways from following this session are number one, your child must now be revising for at least two hours every day. Students must plan and use a revision timetable so that they can beat the forgetting curve. Your child must prioritise the subjects they feel find most difficult rather than revising the subjects that they are already achieving well in. Students must be given a quiet working environment which they can use to revise without distraction. Students must not simply be reading through their exercise books. Students must be revising using flashcards and Cornell notes. All of Year 11 have been taught how to effectively use flashcards and Cornell notes. Your job now is to ensure that your child is allocating the time and effort they need both in school and out of school to be successful. Your job now is to ensure that they are coming to school every day and on time and that when they get home they are revising for at least two hours. Your job now is either for you or an elder sibling to be testing the knowledge your child has learnt, to test them on the questions that they have written on their flashcards and Cornell notes, to ensure that they will be successful so that they can go on to a good college and after that to a university of their choice 
or a high level career of their choice. Thank you.